held on Friday, Jobs for D.C. First Amendment Act of 2005, a Roderick L. Woodson Esquire of Holland and Knight came in and testified that the PLA that was actually produced by Jane Bruner is his assertion that it is a word-for-word resuscitation of a memo written for the trade union guilds in April of this year, right down to the footnotes to so-called authorities. He indicates, aside from the apparent plagiarism of this document, it is well as asked whether it represents any form of impartial or fair analysis or whether any analysis has taken place at all. Now, you've indicated you have not seen the project labor agreement? They would not provide us with that at the time. Because Mr. Woodson, in fact, provided us a copy of a project labor agreement from Jane Bruner addressed to the mayor on June 20th. And in addition to that, he has a draft of the Washington, D.C. Building and Construction Trades Council statement of position regarding PLA benefits to the city. And the author was Gerald M. White's Esquire. And when you compare the two documents, it's just as Mr. Roderick L. Woodson has indicated, that they're basically word-for-word. So the committee is concerned now as to whether or not we actually receive what we bargained for. Because I understand there's now $28,000 in outstanding invoices that relates to the development of the PLA. And looking at the report that was provided and the report that was put forth by Mr. Woodson, that it appears to be right on point. In fact, even when you look at the sections, economic impact review of the proposed PLA, same thing as in White's. Factor number one, size, scope, and complexity of the project, same as in hers. Factor number two, applicability of prevailing wage law to project, it's the same. The PLA's impact on direct craft labor costs, which is factor number three. Factor number four, level of construction activity, volume, and local area. Factor number five, availability, reliability of skilled craft labor supply. Factor number six, and I'm looking at both documents, ability of PLA to promote cost schedule, quality, and safety. Factor number seven, ability of PLA to promote labor peace and stability. And the conclusions in both of these documents, they both read the facts and circumstances surrounding the stadium project demonstrate that the proposed PLA would substantially benefit the district and its interest in securing timely, cost-effective delivery of this important project. Accordingly, the district will be well within its discretion in applying a PLA specification requirement. And then one says, in this case, and the other one says, to the stadium project. This is basically word for word. And so you have not had an opportunity to examine the work product. No, sir. They, back in, was it April? March or April, we requested a copy of all her work products, and they, the only work product that they spoke to was the PLA, which they declined to provide to us. They indicated that once that agreement was executed, they would provide us with a copy. That has not happened. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.